Hey there, Saki here from Saki Tech. In today's video, I'm going to share over 100 plus tips, tricks, hidden features, fantastic features, and basically a full tutorial of the Samsung Galaxy S8 or the S8 Plus so that you can have absolute mastery over this tiny little super computer. We will start off with some light and quick tips and then dive into more advanced tips that are going to make your jaw drop. We will also learn all about the edge screen secrets and edge panels, as well as discover everything you need to know about the Samsung Galaxy S8's world-class camera. The first part of the video is the largest part of the video and covers everything. But towards the end of the video, I added two separate sections, one that covers the edge screen tips and tricks, and the other one that covers the full camera tips and tricks. You paid a lot of money to own the current best smartphone in the world, and I want you to gain maximum satisfaction with your ownership. So let's dive in and discover everything. No knowledge was left behind. All right, so the first tip I wanna talk about is if you go into the settings, and if you scroll all the way down, go into about phone, and make sure you select a proper device name. When you buy this phone for the first time, it's just gonna say Galaxy S8 or the S8 Plus. Of course, you wanna go in there and you wanna give your device a totally unique name. In my case, I just named my Saki Tech. So anytime another device is looking for my device over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, it's gonna show up as Saki Tech, which is the way I like it. All right, so this tip has to do with your keyboard. Basically, you can adjust the size of the keyboard. Let's go into the message application over here. Let's go right over here and let's uh, bring up the keyboard. Now this keyboard might be too big for some of you guys because the screen is so big, the keyboard naturally takes almost one third of the screen. So what you wanna do is you wanna tap on the settings over here and then go to customization, keyboard size and layout. And from here, you can actually change the size of that keyboard. You can even make it larger if you have larger hands but I like to keep it like this. I like to keep it nice and small and easily accessible. And of course you can test it. As you change the size, you can come here and you can use this testing field uh, to test the new size of the keyboard. And of course you can, if you want, if you don't want these numeric keys just pop in floating on the top, you can disable them, okay? Keyboard becomes even smaller and this time you would have to press that button to access those numbers. Now I like to have those there available, but that's a great way to customize your phone uh, for maximum comfort. All right, so let's go back into settings and here's a bunch of tips that are hiding under the uh, accessibility. So tap accessibility. First thing, let's go to vision, scroll all the way down. You can do two quick things. Uh, you can uh, change, transform your phone into a black and white phone. So no matter where I go, it's gonna be grayscale. All right, the colors are gone. You can do this or you can just negate the colors. Uh, even your uh, menu is going to look a little bit different. So no matter where you go, everything is going to be inverted. Okay, just a little nice thing to play with if you want. And that's that. And then if you go back out into the accessibility, go to Dexterity and Interaction, tap this. What you want to do is enable the Assistant menu, which brings up this nice little floating menu you can put anywhere on the screen. But the great thing is this menu, if you tap it, allows you to access a lot of the functions that you usually access by tapping, swiping, or whatever. So as you can see, it can tap home here, and it brings up the home, right? Instead of tapping this button, I can tap here and go to home, and that's the software version. Or I can do uh, recent apps right here, so that's this button, and I can do everything else that you can see here. Bring down the notifications panel, okay? Tap it one more time, go, goes right back up. And what else? I can uh, go to, if I go over here, I can lock the screen, take a screenshot, I can pinch, I can actually emulate the pinch zoom uh, gesture, I can change the volume, go into the menu and adjust the settings for the actual assistant menu, all right? So just one more thing to play with. If you don't want it, you disable it, it's gone. All right, let's keep moving. All right, so the next setting, let's go into the settings and let's go into sounds and vibration. And what I want you guys to do is scroll all the way down and here you'll see things like sound quality and effects under the advanced tab. If you go inside, you'll see that there's a bunch of options here that are disabled, but also an option here that is actually enabled, which allows you to tweak the bass and the treble, as well as the instrument and vocal levels of your sound that you are playing via your phone. 
Now this is a basic equalizer here. If you want the advanced equalizer, you tap this one and then you get the advanced equalizer for people that are power users. You can also tap this equalizer here and that allows you to pick some preset settings. Uh, if you're playing pop music, you can just go to pop and then go back. And as you can see, things have changed over here a little bit. So you can do that as well. Now let's talk about these settings. These settings actually get activated when you plug in your earphones or your headphones. So I just plugged in the AKG earphones that come with the phone. And as you can see, these options were suddenly enabled. So as you're playing music, you can actually recreate the effect of the rich surround sound by enabling this option. Or as you can see, it says simulate the soft timber of a tube amplifier. Clearly that is something for advanced users. And you can also do UHQ upscaler and you can do this as well, but I don't recommend that you do that for just about anything unless you're actually listening to something specific to a concert hall. And then at the bottom here, we've got the adapt sound. You can tap this and it's going to walk you through to find the best sound for you. All right, so that's the sound quality and effects. Now there's another feature here that is absolutely top notch. It's called separate app sound. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to play music on a separate Bluetooth speaker while you can still use the built-in speakers for perhaps watching a video or playing a game or whatever. The way it works is you go inside and all you do is you enable it first and foremost. Once you enable it, it's going to ask you to select the app and the audio device that you want to work together. So you go inside and what you say is, I want anything that plays uh, in Google Music, let's say Google Music, through the Bluetooth device that I'm going to be selecting from here. Okay, so you can either select the phone or the Bluetooth device. So now I selected the Google Play Music app and what I can tell the phone to do is play that through the phone or play to the Bluetooth device that is connected to my phone, which could be a Bluetooth speaker or a Bluetooth headset or Bluetooth whatever. Okay, but if you read the instruction up here, it says select which audio device you want to use for this app. And of course, this app is right here. So that's the app, Google Play Music, and that is the Bluetooth device I'm going to be picking once I have it enabled. All right. So everything you play on Google Play Music is going to play on that Bluetooth device, but everything else that happens on your phone is going to come out from the bottom speaker or the headphone jack if you have a earphone attached. Absolutely fantastic. Let's move on to the next tip. All right, so the next tip has to do with video. We talked about audio. Let's talk about video, some of the advanced features we have in that respect. So go into the advanced features and then simply scroll down and look at the video enhancer option at the bottom. Make sure it is turned on and then tap on it and go inside. And what this is going to do is it's going to enhance the image quality of your videos so you can enjoy bright and vivid colors. And if you scroll down, it tells you which apps actually support this video enhancer feature. In this case, things like YouTube, Netflix, Crunchyroll, Amazon Prime, all that stuff is enabled, which is great. So make sure this thing is enabled, watch the video with it, then if you don't like it, you can just disable it. But I can guarantee you, you're gonna be loving it. All right, so let's move on to the next tip. We're gonna be skipping the advanced features for now, but we will be coming back to them so you guys can understand exactly what they are. And uh, let's talk about the next tip. All right, so next up, I'm gonna talk about the built-in file explorer for the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus that you can access in two different ways and you can get a lot done. So the first way is to go into the settings and you go into Samsung folder and you simply go into my files and that's your built-in storage explorer. So basically here, they break it down by categories and by your storage resources. So we have the internal storage and the SD card, which I don't have right now, and your cloud storage. Now, if I tap on the internal storage, it's going to give me a view of the folders on my phone, just like as if it was a Windows computer or a Mac computer. And if I tap over here, I can change them to actual list view, or I can keep them at folder view, and I can search for individual files throughout my entire phone just by tapping this icon and just searching for that file name. And of course, there's other things to do over here, such as sorting the folders, creating a new folder, uh, sharing a folder, editing it and going into settings and doing some other stuff. And I encourage you guys to come and look at this. It's very self-explanatory, so it's not a big deal. Uh, let me go back out here. So that's the uh, file explorer that's built into your phone. And also by categories, if you tap on one of them, you can go in and it's going to give you, for example, with the images, all the images that are on your phone 
in various different folders, okay? And from here, you can manage your storage. Now, the other way to access this menu is via settings. So if I go into the settings, and if I go into the device maintenance and I tap it, I go to storage, and first and foremost, here you have this option to do a, perform a cleanup, which allows you to free up storage space by deleting unnecessary data. I just did it, so the button is unavailable, okay? But if you wanna continue to the file explorer, you tap this icon, you tap on storage settings, and again, you, have, you get a different snapshot, and from here, you tap on explore, and that takes you into that file folder as well. The only difference is when you come through this route, you get more information snapshot in front of you. Now, one thing I wanna talk about is the cached data. If you tap this, it allows you to clear up a lot of data that you usually do not need. So just 10 minutes ago when I did this, this was saying 650 megabytes. So I tapped that and I simply cleared it and suddenly I had 650 megabytes of space available for music, videos, photos, whatever. And uh, like I said, you don't usually need this cached data. And also you can come back here and you can always do a cleanup that also removes a lot of the unnecessary files that are just sitting on your phone, such as temporary files. All right, so let's move on to the next tip. Quick tip, if you have any folder on your phone, I don't have anyone right here right now, but if I go to my app drawer, you'll see that there's a bunch of folders. I can tap on these guys and I can tap on this color palette and I can change the color of that folder so I can color code my folders as I desire. On top of that, there's two things here I can do. Now, first and foremost, as you can see, I have a bunch of apps on this um, phone, but there's two missing spaces here that I just created, which happens every now and then. And then I have a bunch of uh, apps sitting over here. What I can do is I can perform a cleanup so this page gets filled and then everything remaining goes onto this page. All I have to do is tap this button right here, right there, and then I tap on clean up pages. And then when you do that, it's gonna fill out all the empty spaces, okay? So that's what it turns to. This is a preview, by the way. So the, the two missing spots got filled and everything got moved over here. You click apply and that's it, you got it. The next thing I want to talk about is the notifications panel. So if you pull the notifications panel down, let me just clear this really quick. If you pull this panel down, normally you may not see this brightness indicator here. If you pull it down even more, you know, it expands the full quick toggles and the brightness setting. What I can do here is I can tap this arrow and I can say show control on top. I can disable that. When I do this, uh, and if I pull this down for the first time, you're not gonna see the brightness slider. But if you want access to that brightness slider, you do scroll down, you tap that arrow, and you say, show control on top of the notifications paddle. And then if I click okay, and if I go back down, as you can see, that brightness indicator shows up right there, the slider. And the other thing I'm gonna show you guys with the notifications panels is, when you scroll down, you can actually rearrange this entire thing over here. So basically I can bring things that I use most often to the forefront. And you see this order here, it says Wi-Fi, sound, Bluetooth, and auto rotate. When I pull this up, that's the same order that it retains on the smaller version of the notifications panel. So you wanna bring everything that you want that's important into the first six spots over here. All you do is tap this icon, and you say button order. You tap it, and then you can start moving stuff around. By the way, you have two screens here. There's a lot of stuff. So I can take Bluetooth and I can put it into the first position if that's what I, the way I like it. And I can also take things I do not need and drag them to this area and they become deactivated. So I don't need the sync, for example, put it right there. Uh, I don't need the NFC, put it right there. They're all being disabled right now. Let me put it over here. Okay, so that's how you disable and reorder uh, the quick toggle settings in the notifications panel. Now, as you can see, Bluetooth has moved into the first place, and even when I go like this, it's gonna be in the first place. And one more thing while we are here, you tap that again, and you can change the button grid. So right now we have a uh, four by three, so you have four buttons vertically, I mean horizontally, and three buttons vertically. If I tap the button grid, I can change it to a five by three so you can fit more quick toggles into this screen, all right? And also you can do button grid, you can do three by three 
if you want a larger view such as this. All right, let's move on to the next tip. All right, so the next tip has to do with data management. So you probably have a data plan through your carrier and you probably have a limit and you do not want to go over that limit because they will charge you a lot of money. So what you want to do is go to the settings, go into connections on the top and go to data usage. And from here, go to mobile data usage. The first thing you want to do here is pick a proper cycle for your data usage. In my case, it's month to month. So it's April 1st to April 30th. That's my billing cycle. If you go into the settings, you can choose to start the proper billing cycle. But the big thing is, as you can see, here's a graph, and I have set for myself a four gigabyte data warning. So if within this range of uh, the billing cycle, I go above the four gigabyte limit, I get a warning. It tells me, hey, you are almost used half of your data this month, okay? But the next thing over here is the red bar, which actually shuts off the data. So if you ever reach eight gigs of usage within this month, it simply shuts off my data. So I, can po I cannot possibly go beyond that set limit. If I do go into the settings though, I can change these warning levels. So I can make this uh, five, you know, depending on what kind of data you have, you can change these numbers and I can do 10. And if I go back out, I get a warning at five gigabytes, but at 10 gigabytes, my data actually shuts off so I can't go beyond it and get charged extra fees. Fantastic. Now this next feature is specifically designed for emergency and security. So let's go into the settings and let's go to advanced features and scroll all the way down. Well, not down, actually down and uh, go to send SOS messages. Okay, so this is basically a stressed signal. So tap on it and make sure you enable it. What this is gonna allow you to do if there's ever an emergency where you're in a situation that you don't want to be in, you can triple tap the power key right here, or like you see on the screen here, and it's going to automatically send a message to a phone number that you designate. So basically, in my case, I will send a text message to my other phone that's uh, Saki Tech, just for demonstration. Obviously, you want to send this to somebody, some actual different person. Uh, could, you, could be your brother, your father, your mother, your best friend, whatever. And uh, then uh, this setting here allows you to attach pictures and audio recording to your stress signal. So you triple tap, and if you have these options enabled, what the phone is gonna do, is gonna take a picture with the front camera and the rear camera, and it's gonna record a five second audio, plus it's gonna add the exact location of where you are using Google Map coordinates and it's gonna send a bundled text message to that person that you designed right over here, okay? So it sends pictures, audio recording, and it also sends the exact location using Google Maps. So when the other person gets the text message, they're able to click a link, and that link takes them to Google Maps application and pinpoints your location, and they get pictures and, and audio recording. Absolutely fantastic. Enable it just in case. So the next feature, you want to go back in the settings, go to display, and it's right over here. It's called the blue light filter. Actually, it's on the top here. It's called the blue light filter. So what the blue light filter does is at nighttime, it reduces the eye strain by limiting the amount of blue light that the screen emits. Okay, that's what actually gives us eye strain at nighttime. So you can enable that, and as you can see, it became a warmer color, so it's easy on the eyes. You can also go into the uh, actual setting and modify it. You can turn it on now or you can turn on as schedule. So let's just click allow. So it says sunset to rise or custom schedule. So you can pick the start time and the end time. So start time should be sometime around nighttime when maybe the sun goes down and the end time should be maybe in the morning. Very nice option. And I just want to let you know that if you do enable this option, you can also access this option. You can quickly toggle it on or off from the uh, quick toggles menu. It should be somewhere right over here. Uh, there we go, blue light filter. You tap it, enables it. You tap it again, it disables it, all right? And the next thing is actually back in the display. If you do go back in the display, uh, what you could do is you can change the screen resolution of your phone. If you tap this, you have three options. You have high definition plus, and that's the resolution numbers. 
you've got full high definition plus and uh, the and the quad high definition plus and the only reason you want to change this is just to preserve battery life i'll tell you right now that if you keep this over here and uh, click apply it's going to change the screen resolution it's going to look just as good but you're probably going to get two to three hours of extra battery life because a lot of juice a lot of battery power is required uh, to give you a higher resolution so if you are having problems with the battery you can even go to HD plus if you're not a gamer if you're not a movie watcher maybe you just like to use your phone for basic things you can keep it at HD plus and it's gonna look great but of course if you're watching videos and playing games this is recommended this of course is the most sharp and clear version but it's gonna eat more battery life okay only change this if it is actually bothering you if you're having problems with your battery life you can come and play with that all right the next one is a very important security feature you simply have to in this case disable and I'll show you why so go into the settings and go into the um, lock screen and security uh, scroll all the way down and go to other security settings and then look for make passwords visible make sure you guys disable this because I'll show you why right now let's go to uh, Chrome and here's an email that I just put in and I'm about to type my password let's say somebody was looking at my screen as I'm typing my password right and they're looking over here hopefully not at the keyboard but they're looking right over here which is sometimes natural uh, as I'm typing my password you can see the characters that are going in to the password field alright so if I go back into the settings and I make sure do not if I say do not make passwords visible now when I type in the password it's not going to show anything so it's going to show stars right away so you can actually hide your keyboard while you're typing your um, your password and this is going to be completely hidden as well so nobody will get any hints whatsoever all right so let's move on to the next tip how to customize the navigation button colors at the bottom here so as you can see right now it's in transparent mode which is the normal mode you're going to see when you're in the home screen itself but what you could do is if you go into the settings as you can see the color is now different to change the color you go into display you scroll all the way down and you go into navigation bar you tap this and then from here you can pick any color that you desire so there are some preset colors over here that you can pick from if you so desire or you can tap this and pick basically any color that you want my favorite color of course is this one over here so that's what I'm gonna keep so while we are here I'm also gonna give you the second hidden feature which is the button layout feature now as it is right now we have the home button in the middle the back key over here on the right and the recents key on the left so if I tap this it takes me back but if I want to uh, modify that I can uh, do so what you want to do is you want to tap on button layout and then you can pick the second order here where the back key gets over here the recent key gets over here so this is basically all about which layout you're more comfortable with now while we are here I'm gonna show you one more thing before I exit uh, if you look over here it says unlock with home button and as you know that is the home button and that home button even works when the whole display is off so let's say you don't have a security setup let's say you don't have fingerprint setup let's say you don't have iris setup what you could do is if you enable this and if you press and hold on this button while your screen is off it's going to skip the lock screen and go straight into your home screen without you having to swipe the screen to unlock so right now I have a pin so if I shut the phone off I can press and hold on this and it takes me into the pin or the iris scanner so let me just put in my uh, pin number here and go right inside if I did not have that pin or did not have any kind of other security it would have gone straight to my home page right over here all right so that's that let's move on to the next tip the next tip has to do with the edge panels we all know what the edge panels are you go into the settings as usual you go to display and at the bottom here it's gonna say the edge screen you tap it and make sure it is enabled now when you tap this you can go and you can customize the edge panels you can customize the panels you want to see when you swipe this over but that's not what I wanted to show you what I really want to show you is this smart select panel that is new on the Samsung Galaxy S8 this smart select panel as a matter of fact is a replica of the air command menu that you get with the Samsung Galaxy Note 
phones. So let me show you what it does. Again, it's activated right now, so that's the only thing that I have right now. What I could do is if I tap on rectangle, I can choose any portion of the screen rectangularly, click done, and that's going to allow me to take a screenshot of that area that I selected, and I can even extract the text from it. So if I tap this, it's going to extract all the text that is seen within the selected area. So it extracted 55, Clifton Heights, and all that little text you see at the bottom. Let's close it out show you one more thing with the same tip. Uh, again, if you swipe over for the edge panels and activate the Smart Select, you can also do this. So you can go oval shaped. So I can select this area, click Done, and that's going to take a screenshot of that area that I selected. When I click Save, it goes into the gallery. So if I go into my apps, and if I go into my gallery right over here, uh, I'll see that selected area right over here. As you can see, it is circular in nature. Okay, so make sure you guys activate the Smart Select and start to benefit from this nice, beautiful feature that has been transitioned into the S8 from the Note series of phones. Now let me jump right into the next tip. Now as you can see over here, I have the app drawer. Now some of you guys may be wondering how come he has an app drawer because by default the app drawer is deactivated on the Samsung Galaxy S8. So all you have to do is press and hold on the screen, go into home screen settings, and then over here tap on the app button and then make sure you can either say show apps button which is what I have right now or you can hide them. So if I hide them and if I click apply, when I go back out, the app drawer is in fact gone. Now, if you want to access it, you just swipe up for all the apps, okay? If you don't want it, if you do want the app drawer though, go back into settings, go to apps button, and then show apps button, click apply, go back out, now you got that little app drawer right there, you tap it, you go right in, you don't have to pull up, okay? Even though pull up is always available. The next tip has to do with pressing and holding on app icons to bring a menu that kind of replicates the right click menu on the windows. So basically all you have to do is press and hold on an app and then let go and you'll get this menu. From here you can select, you can remove the shortcut, you can get some app information or if possible you can disable that app. If I tap on app info, it takes me to the app info screen from where I can make modifications to that app uh, in different ways in the system. But of course, that is something you have available on all these apps that you're going to see uh, sitting on your home screen. All right, let's move on to the next tip. The next tip has to do with your messages application. If I go into the messages application, uh, let me go back out here. Let's go into this message over here. And as you can see, it's pretty bland. We have a white background and just the regular uh, bubbles over here. What you could do is when you're in the main screen, what you want to do is tap this icon over here and then go into the settings and then from here you can tap on background and you can change the background of the whole thing. So I can choose this. I can even go into my gallery and pick any picture that I've taken myself but uh, these are some of the presets over here so I can pick any one of these guys and then I can uh, click back, go back in, go back into the message and now it's much more exciting. Now the next thing you can do is if you go into the settings and if you scroll down to advanced features, you tap on it, you have an option called finger sensor gestures. So as you know, the fingerprint sensor is on the back of the phone. What you could do is you can open and close apps and features with the fingerprint sensor. Let's enable this really quick and tap on it to go inside and let's see, uh, let's see what options we have. So what you could do is you can swipe up or down on the fingerprint sensor to open or close the notification panel. So right now, if I wanted to access the notifications panel, I would just use my finger to swipe down. But what I could do now is I can use the fingerprint sensor as a button to access notifications panel. So quickly, if I flip this over, there's that, uh, there's that fingerprint sensor. And if I swipe down, it's gonna bring down the notifications panel. Swipe up, it goes right back down. Okay, so this is what I'm doing. Up, I mean down, up. So you can enable this option under the advanced features. Absolutely fantastic. Now let me go back out here. Again, in the advanced features, there's another feature you might want to enable, especially if you have the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, which has a very large display, which could be hard to reach sometimes with just one, one finger. What you want to do is you want to enable the one-handed mode. 
So first you enable it, then you go right inside, and then you can pick up a gesture to actually activate the one-handed mode. You have two options. You can actually swipe up diagonally from either bottom corner. So you can swipe in from here or here, and that's going to bring up the one-handed mode. But what I prefer is this one, the button mode. So what you do is you can tap the home button three times, and that brings up the one-handed mode. So let's tap it. There we go. So now the entire phone has minimized itself, so I can access it with one hand. Now if I were holding the phone like this, I can tap this so that it is... Um, Tap this, so it's uh, left justified, but if I was holding the phone with my right hand, I can uh, right justified, so if I'm holding the other way around, I can easily access the full screen just by using my thumb. Okay, so this would be my, uh, let's see, there we go. So the phone can be entirely used and manipulated, even going to the phone, make a phone call using one thumb completely in your control. Not bad at all. And of course, when you're ready to exit the one-handed mode, you can do two things. You can press the settings icon over here and simply disable it, all right? Or you can tap the home button three times also to disable the one-handed mode, just like you made the activation. All right, so the next feature I want to share with you guys is kind of hidden. So what you want to do is you want to go into the settings, go all the way down to general management, and then at the bottom, tap on reset. And what you could do is you can set times for the phone to automatically restart itself. Now, why would you want to do that? If you look over here, it tells you exactly why. It says, optimize your device by restarting it automatically at set times. So basically with the Android, every time you restart your phone, it's kind of like refreshing the phone so it works at optimum condition. You don't have to do this every day. So if you enable this and go inside, you can pick a schedule. So let's enable this one more time. Basically what you want to do is you want to pick a time like 3 a.m. when you're asleep and then pick a day of the week. So all you have to do is do it once a week and it's going to make sure that your phone is running at optimum performance at all times. Believe me, I've seen people not restart their phones for months and months and months and it gets cloggy and bloaty and sometimes reduces the performance. So make sure you enable this option. All right, so next up, I'm gonna talk about the home screen and some of the elements you can actually customize on the home screen. So the first thing is, if you wanna access your apps on the Samsung Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus, you have to pull upwards on the screen and that goes into the uh, app drawer. We don't have a dedicated button that you would find on the older phones, but it actually is available and you can activate it. So all you wanna do is you wanna press and hold on the screen. You wanna go into the home screen settings and then go to apps button and simply say show apps button. So when I click apply and I go back out, you now have a dedicated apps button that will take you into your apps drawer. Some people like this, some people don't like this. It's up to you to keep it or not keep it. And the next thing is to actually change the entire home screen layout. So what you wanna do is you wanna go back into the home screen settings and you wanna go into home screen layout um, you have two options. What this allows you to do is you can either have a home screen and an app screen or a home screen only. If I pick the home screen only, the app drawer is going to disappear and all the apps are going to show up on the home screens. So let me show you how that looks like. Click apply. And now as you can see, the app drawer uh, button is gone. And if I swipe over, all the apps are now on the desktop. So this is an option that you do have, okay? So let me go back in. I don't like this too much. Go back in, go to home screen layout. So what I like is I like to have an app screen and a home screen separately. So click apply. And as you can see, it's right back in business. You can access it this way as well. And one more thing I want to show you guys, as I was uh, browsing through the menu, you might have seen that the navigation bar at the bottom here is a different color. So what you can do is you can actually uh, put any color, pick any color that you want for this navigation pane. So what you want to do is you want to go into display scroll all the way down, go into navigation bar, and from here you can pick all these different colors that you please. You can even go in here and use the color selector to pick a very unique color that you might like. So let's click done. I like to keep this one over here. Absolutely fantastic. And here's a quick bonus tip. Uh, you can actually change the button layout. So if I tap this over here, I can swap the back key with the recents key. So I can actually uh, tap on this, oops, tap on this over here. And now the recent key is right here and the back key is right there. So it's again, 
Whatever makes you more comfortable is the one you should pick. I like this version better. Let's move on to the next customization tactic. All right, so the next up, I wanna talk about the always on display. So the settings reside under lock screen and security. So if you tap here, you can go into always on display, disable it or enable it, then go inside and you have a bunch of options. Right now, I my option is to show nothing but the home button. That's the home button at the bottom. So when I turn off my phone, the always on display activates the home button that I can see at all times, which is very convenient. But of course, there's more than that. So let's go back in here and you have options like these. So you can actually show the home button and clock or information. And then you have access to all these clocks, you know, the digital clock, analog clock, world clock, edge clock, image and calendar. When you tap on any one of these, you can go in and further customize it. So let's say I pick this one right here. I can change the clock style for the analog clock from here. I can pick a different analog clock, this one, perhaps this one, or this one, right? I can also change the color for the uh, clock background. So as you can see right now, it is red, but I can go for blue, uh, purple, or whatever color that I desire. And uh, the other thing I can do is I can tap on background and I can pick a background to go behind the actual clock. So let me just cancel that. But just to be, just so you're clear, uh, when you tap any one of these guys, you can go in and further customize that particular clock option. So again, I can change the clock type to this over here, and then I can click apply. And now if I go out to the lock screen, it's gonna activate the always on display. But as you can see, not only do I see the clock, I also see the home button because that's what I chose to do. So let me go back in and here what I can do also is I can actually hide the home button. So I can just go with clock or information. So now when I tap this and click apply and when I go back out and shut the phone, this time you're going to see the always on display, but you're not going to see the home button. All right. The home button is still there. You're just not going to see it. All right. So that was the always on display. Just remember, the most important thing is when you go in here and you tap any one of these, you can further customize them um, as you please, which is absolutely fantastic. Very well organized menu. All right, let's move on to the next tip. The next thing I like to do has to do with the phone dialer. A lot of you guys probably use the phone all the time, so why not customize it as much as I can? So let me go back in here, and then as you can see, these are the contacts. Now, if I go into the phone dialer, what I could do is I can press and hold on any one of these numbers except for one because one is reserved for voicemail. If I press and hold on two, it's going to ask me if I want to assign a contact for a speed dial number. So what you do then is you tap assign and you pick somebody that you like. And now number two is assigned to my bro. So if I tap and hold two, it's going to actually call that number. Okay, so you can do this for all uh, these digits. And the other thing over here is if you go into contacts, I just want to let you know that as you can see on the top here, I have favorites. So all you do to pick favorites is go into individual contacts. For example, let's go to bro. Let's go to details and simply tap the star icon. And that makes that contact favorite and it allows it to show on the top above everybody else. Okay, very convenient. And finally, if I go into the settings one more time here, uh, if I go to answering and ending calls, what I could do is I can set uh, the volume key to answer calls, and I can also use the power key to end calls. So if I enable these two, let's say somebody gives me a call, I can simply press the volume button and that's going to accept the call. And when I'm done with the call, I can press the power key and that's going to actually end the call. All right, another way to add some customization features to your uh, phone experience. And the final tip I want to give you guys has to do with the enabling a game mode. So what you want to do is if you play games a lot and if you want to get the best possible experience from your gaming, what you want to do is you want to go to the settings, go to device maintenance, and then go into the performance mode. And from here, you've got all these options. So if you want to actually enjoy the uh, gaming to the max, you can choose the game mode. 
And if you look over here, it says you have enhanced your gaming experience by making games run more smoothly. Okay, now this may reduce your battery life, but we all know that gaming does not in any way extend your battery life. So if you are a gamer, uh, make sure that the gaming mode is enabled before you get into the game. So you don't have to have this activated at all times. You can keep it right over here if you so desire. As you can see, it's turning that off. Uh, but when you're ready to game, just go into the game mode. And of course, you have entertainment mode and the high performance mode. If you have the S8, you can come in and take a look at what these do. All right. All right, so now I want to talk about the secured folder. Basically, secure folder is designed to keep prying eyes away from your device and put some of your most important files under a total lockdown. So when you first get your phone, what you want to do is you want to go into the uh, app drawer, go into Samsung, and the secure folder will be sitting right there. And all you want to do is you want to launch it. Once you launch the secure folder for the first time, it's going to ask you to pick a PIN number for the secure folder. By the way, if you cannot find the secure folder uh, in the Samsung folder, which is possible for some carriers, all you want to do is you want to go to the settings, you want to go to lock screen and security, and then scroll down, and there's a secure folder. And if you click this for the first time, you know, it's going to ask you to set up a PIN number. Now, remember, the PIN number you pick up for the secure folder is actually a separate PIN number from what you would use to unlock your actual phone. So for demonstration purposes, I picked 0, 0, 0, 0, and then when I click OK, it goes into the secure folder. Now let me show you guys how this works. Basically, everything you do in the secure folder remains, stays inside secure folder. Now let me show you a quick example. So if I launch Samsung Notes over here, and let's say I go and I create a brand new note, so let me just skip this, just allow the permissions if it's going to ask for that. Uh, let's uh, create a new note over here. Let's just type in. So we type that in. It says it's secure. This file is private. Let's save this. So what's going to happen is uh, this file is saved in Samsung Notes application, but it's completely secure unless you access it via the secure folder. So if I tap it right now, it's going to bring me that note. But if I exit the secure folder, and by the way, every time you exit secure folder, it actually gets locked out. So if I try to go back in, it's going to ask for a password. Okay, but let me go, go to the regular Samsung notes over here in the Samsung folder. Let me launch it. And as you can see, when I do that, there is nothing in here because the note that I created earlier was created within the secure folder environment. So that is how the secure folder works, okay? And again, if I go back in here, and if I put my password in, uh, and I go to Samsung Notes, that note that I just created is in fact sitting securely in that folder. You can do this with all these apps. You can do it with the gallery app. You can do it with the camera app. So if I go to the camera right now, and let me just allow this permissions, and if I take a picture, that's going to be a black picture, and if I go into gallery via the secure folder, I will see that one picture, okay? But if I go to my regular gallery over here, I'm not going to see that picture. I'll see the other pictures that I took, but I'm not going to see the secure picture that I just took. Now, one more thing I'm going to show you guys. What if you have a file here that you want to secure? All you have to do is select that file, okay? So select that file, or let's select this one over here and then tap this icon over here. And at the bottom, it says move to secure folder. So I can move individual files from my gallery application or other applications right into the secure folder, as long as the app supports it. So let's tap this. Now, as you can see, let's, it's gonna ask for a password. Let's do that. And that thing has been moved to secure folder, so it's no longer here in my regular gallery application. Now, let me exit that. So if I go back into the secure folder, and if I put my password in, and if I go into the gallery, now I have two secure pictures that nobody can ever see but me, as long as I access it via the secure folder by putting in my PIN number. And just one more thing on the secure folder, if you do tap here, you can go into the settings, and from the settings, there's actually a lot of things you can do. Uh, what you could do is this is the most important one over here. It says auto lock secure folder every time you leave the app. 
Okay, so make sure, so make sure this is set to be immediately, all right? So every time you exit the secure folder, it gets locked down immediately. So, so it's impossible for anyone to get smart and access it, all right? The other thing is the lock type for the secure, secure folder can be changed. If you go into the lock type, as you can see, let me just put the password in. You can use fingerprints and you can use your iris sensor, which, you know, scans your eyeballs. And also, if you tap this, you can pick anything, the pattern, the password, whatever you want, all right? Just be aware of these customizations. And now that you're aware of the secure folder, you can come in and you can play with all these other little options. For example, you can add applications. If you want to, you can add other applications into your secure folder and perform similar tasks as I just did on the gallery and the Samsung Notes. You can also add files if I tap this. It's going to ask me, do you want to add image files, videos, audio, or whatever. You tap on any one of these guys, and you can pick an image, and you can move that into the secure folder. Okay? And that's the secure folder. Let's move on to the next advanced feature. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is how to save power, how to save battery life on your phone. And your phone gives you a lot of options. So all you want to do, first and foremost, is go into the settings, and then go into device maintenance, tap on it, and then go into the battery. And here's the good thing about this. You have three options. First of all, for the power savings mode, uh, you can actually have it off, so your just phone is just running as usual. Number two, you can pick a medium level. If you look at this screen carefully, uh, it actually decreased the brightness by minus 10%. It changes the screen resolution of your phone from Quad HD Plus to Full High Definition Plus, and it also enables a CPU speed limiter that actually lowers the clock speed of your processor so it doesn't eat as much battery life. It also turns off the background network usage and turns off the always-on display. Now, if you look over here, it says Apply. It's saying if you apply these settings, it's going to give you plus 10 hours and 32 minutes of extra battery life. Now, you can go even further. You can tap this Customize button, and that's going to apply to the medium power savings mode. And you can actually customize even the medium power savings mode itself. For example, you can say, when I activate the medium power savings mode, I want my screen to be high definition plus and not full high defi definition plus. And just by doing that, I added one hour and five minutes of extra battery life. And then at the bottom here, uh, the speed limiter is on, always on display. Let me just show you one thing. So with the always on display, if I enable this, it changes the estimated battery life to 41 hours. If I disable it, it changes to 48 hours. So just by enabling and disabling, the difference is seven hours of battery life based on my current usage. And once you pick all the options that you like, you can simply click apply and that applies that mode. And the other thing over here is the maximum power savings mode. Now with the medium power savings mode, right now it's off. So I am at 36 hours. With the medium, I'm gonna be at 46 hours. And with the maximum, it's actually gonna give me 131 hours of battery life. But it's not gonna be doing much. So if I tap on maximum power savings mode, it's going to turn my interface into a very basic interface. It's going to decrease the brightness. It's going to decrease the screen resolution. And it's going to, you know, turn off all these options. I can, again, go to customize. And I can tweak these things as much as I want to get my optimum battery life. But let me just apply this really quick and show you what it looks like. If you click apply, it's actually not going to look like your regular phone. So it's actually performing all the tasks. It's giving you updates as it's doing it. So let's wait for this to complete and it's complete. And with the maximum power savings mode, your phone turns into this basic little thing. So you can't really do much. You can add some other applications, but you're not gonna be able to add high intensity applications. But really, once you do this, as long as it's for making calls and sending text messages and browsing the internet a little bit, you're gonna be able to get a lot of battery life that no other phone can match. And if you want to disable it, you tap that button, turn off maximum power savings mode and you're going to go right back into the regular mode. I recommend you guys use this in a pinch uh, when your battery life may perhaps be at 20% and you're nowhere near a power adapter. Alright, so the next tip is a pretty cool tip. 
So if I go into the calculator application, I'm just using this application as an example. What I could do is from the, from the top corner of the screen, either from either side, if I swipe in, it turns that calculator into a miniature app. And then I can take this and move it around the screen. I can even resize it and make it even smaller or make it into a size that I am comfortable with, okay? And then if I go to the home from here, it's gonna actually get minimized and it's just gonna be on the screen. But you can put this anywhere you want for quick access. The point is, if I'm doing something on the phone, let's say I'm on a website, I'm looking at some prices and I wanna do a quick calculation, I can just tap on this guy and I can do a quick calculation, all right? And when I'm done, I can tap this button here and put it on the corner again and continue doing what I'm doing, working with the numbers. But every time I need to access the calculator, I can just tap this button, do my thing, and put it down again, all right? And the other thing is, I can also switch by tapping this button, I can switch to the full screen mode in case I need more room to work with. Now you do have to enable this option. What you wanna do is you wanna go into the settings and you wanna go into the advanced features and then go into multi-window and from here, make sure pop-up view action is in fact enabled. If you swipe over, it tells you exactly what it's for. Now, this is not gonna work with every single application, but it's compatible with a lot of applications. So if I was in Chrome, if I was in Chrome, let's say I was in Google or T-Mobile or whatever, I can do that to Chrome as well. Oops, there we go, from the top corner. And now I have a little Chrome window I can put around, even resize and use it at my convenience. And when I don't need it, I can simply put it to the side for quick access. And the great news is I can do this for multiple apps. So let me go back into the calculator application right here. And let's say I wanna use that as well. Let me just minimize this from the other side. And if I tap the minimize icon, that actually also gets minimized and it gets coupled with the Chrome application I was using. If I tap it, they both show up and I can choose whichever I want. I can choose this one, or if I tap this, that will come up and they are both on the screen right now. And then I can just exit when I'm done with these things. Absolutely fantastic. Let's move on to the next feature. The next tip has to do with gaming. So if you're a gamer, this tip is for you. If you're not a gamer, you may skip to the next uh, advanced tip. So first and foremost, I want you guys to go into the settings, go into advanced features, go into games, and make sure game launcher is enabled. What this is gonna do for you is, it's gonna create a little game folder. Let's go take a look at it. Uh, it's right here, this game launcher, and it's gonna aggregate all the games you download into this automatically, and on top of that, it's gonna give you some really amazing features while you're playing a game. Before we even dive into the games, I just wanna quickly show you at the bottom here, uh, you have some options. It says normal performance, if you tap it, you can switch to high performance, which is going to give you even better gaming performance by tweaking your phone. And then you have the uh, saving power mode that you do not want to do when you're playing a game. I recommend that you keep it at the uh, high performance mode to get the maximum benefit from gaming. Now let's launch an actual game and see what we can do with the built-in options in the game launcher. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to launch the Lara Croft Go game. And then I'm going to show you all the options that come in. Let me uh, wait till the game loads. So we're in the game. Let me just tap on play. Let's go to the entrance and let's just pick a level over here uh, just for demonstration. So there's the game. Okay, so you're playing the game and here's all the things you can do. Swipe in from the bottom and then tap on this icon here. And that's the game tools options. Now from here, what you can do is you can switch this game to the full screen. It's not currently at full screen, okay? As you can see, it's not utilizing, there's some black bars on the sides, so it's not fully utilizing the full screen. Uh, I don't recommend that you do it, because when you do go to full screen, it's gonna ask you to restart the game and even give you a warning that this mode may cause the game to display incorrectly, and at many points, that's gonna be true. So forget about the full screen mode. What I truly like is to set this option on, no alerts during game. So if I disable this and if I get a text message, it's gonna interrupt my game. But if I enable this, as I'm playing the game, nobody can uh, alert me for anything. And then you can enable the hard press button lock. You can uh, do the edge touch lock, oops. But those are not that important. What I really wanna show you guys is these two things over here. Recording the gameplay and taking a screenshot, screenshot of your game. 
So basically, if I'm playing the game and I like something, uh, I like this uh, scenery perhaps, I can go over here, I can tap this, and I can tap on screenshot, and that actually takes a beautiful screenshot of the game and saves it into your gallery. And if I want to actually record the gameplay, I can go over here, I can click record, and now it's actually recording the game. So as I play the game, it's being recorded, and I can then go and I can send this, this game to one of my friends to show how cool it is, or maybe even upload it to YouTube. Now when you're done recording, you go back here and you tap on stop on the top here, okay? So that says see recorded video in game launcher. You can go into the game launcher and you can actually look at all the recorded videos. So those are the game tools. And of course I can go here again, I can go into the settings from here and I can also exit and I can go into the, oops, I can go into the actual game launcher screen which is gonna flip the screen. And of course, when I'm back in the game launcher, all I do is I tap this, and I can go into my diary, and that's gonna show me uh, the games that I've played, but most importantly, if I go over, it's gonna show me all the videos that I've recorded while I was playing that game. They're gonna be right here. And if I go into the gallery application, of course, uh, the screenshots are gonna show up right over here. Even the, even the video is gonna be right there, but there's a screenshot, and there's the video. All right, so let's move on to the next tip. All right, so before I dive into the actual edge panels that are right over here, let me go into the edge settings, and I'm going to show you a couple things really quickly. So let's go over to the display, which is right here on the top. Scroll down under display, go to the edge screen, and here we have the edge panels and edge lightning. The very first thing you want to do before you even play with the edge panels is to actually configure this handle. This thing is called the handle that allows you to pull in the edge screen. So tap on the settings and go into the handle settings. So from here you can actually move this handle anywhere that you want. You can have it on the left and on the right. If you have it on the right, the edge panel will come in from the right side. If you have it on the left, it's going to come in from the left side. And you can also make it small or large okay so let me put it over here so it can be small or large and you can change the transparency it can be invisible if you don't want to see it or it can be fully visible or the middle and of course when you pull the edge panel inside when you activate the edge screen it gives you a vibration feedback that you can enable or disable right from here so that is the handle make sure you put the handle somewhere where, where it's very convenient for you guys to access for maximum comfort. So let's go back out here. And now we're gonna be talking about these two options, but first let's talk about the edge panels. Let me go back out really quick and just pull this up really quick. I'm gonna show you a couple panels here that you're not gonna see with the phone. So for example, the calculator panel is something you have to download and install separately, and then you can do quick, uh, do quick calculations over here. Uh, very convenient to have. And then you have the weather widget that comes standard. Uh, you've got the uh, device maintenance that comes standard. And of course, if you tap any one of these icons, it takes you into the app that actually manages that setting. All right, let's go back out, go back in. And then we have the coin tossing game that I just talked about. Basically, what you can do is you can ask somebody uh, head or tails, and then they say heads, and you tap it, and then you get heads. Okay, or you can say to do it again if you want. So head or tails, you say tails, boom, you get heads. So great for coin tossing uh, with your buddies. And then over here, we have the soft key edge panel. This panel is fantastic. Uh, these top buttons here are the replicas of the buttons at the bottom. You know, you've got the back key, the home key, the recent key. But these two screens are amazing, these two buttons, I mean. This one allows you to lock the phone on the spot. All right, let's go back in. And the other one allows you to take a screenshot. So if I'm on this screen, I want to take a screenshot of this screen to share with somebody. I just pull the edge panel, I click screen capture, and it takes a screenshot, and then it saves that screenshot into the gallery application. All right, so as you can see, we have some really cool uh, panels over here. That's a data usage manager. It actually shows you uh, how much data you used since uh, April 1st. Again, you can manage all that, you know, what date you want this to start off of. Scroll over, you've got the edge board, you've got a little uh, things over here, and then if you tap this button here, it gives you a list of all the favorite apps that you can quickly access. If you tap on the settings, it actually allows you to go in uh, to the edge board 
click edit and change what apps you want to have in that favorites drawer all right so you can change all these apps which is great and then if I scroll over one more time that's the fast notes I can create shopping lists and have them on my edge panel anytime I desire now we're gonna talk about those but let me go into back into the settings go to display and go to uh, edge panels which is at the bottom right there edge screen and go into edge panels and basically what you can do if you look here I have a lot of edge panels you're not gonna get these many edge panels when you first buy the phone so what you have to do is you have to go into the download and once you go into the download you have a bunch of a whole bunch of free edge panels that you can download and install or paid ones okay and some of these paid ones are really nice uh, for example this one is the messages application uh, messages edge panel I mean and if you download this you can actually see your text messages in your edge panels in this format and uh, let's go back out so you can download as many as you want let me go back out and then if you tap on this icon here what you can do is you can reorder your edge panels and uh, one more thing before I do that as you can see I have a lot of panels available unfortunately you cannot activate them all at once you can have a maximum of nine edge panels at all times so if I do go back into the edge panels I can only have nine panels activated at the same time so you have to be very selective in what you choose but going back over here we already looked at the handle settings uh, the other thing you can do is you can uninstall an edge panel that you do not need you just pick the one that you don't like you tap on this and you click OK all right and that is gone and then if you go back in you tap this again you tap on reorder and then you can actually reorder the edge panels uh, by the order that you prefer so if you want the weather widget quickly accessible you can move it to the first position or if you want the calculator application you can move that into the first position and then when you go back out let me go back in here when you go back out and pull the edge panel in the first position you're gonna have the calculator and you can quickly use that let me go back into the settings and like I said just be aware that some of these edge panels come with the option to actually edit that panel so for example this uh, edge board panel is editable uh, the fast notes panel is editable you go into the edit and you can actually add notes from here okay so every time you add a note it's gonna show up on the on the panel so just be aware of that fact that you can edit some of these guys and uh, that's basically all you can do with the edge panels you know go to the store download more reorder them uninstall them if you don't need them and also modify where you want the handle to be uh, absolutely fantastic you get so much you can get so much functionality out of the edge panels sometimes you don't even have to go into the phone itself you don't have to go like this and launch the calculator app you can just swipe over and it's right there for a quick shot now let's look at the other setting I was talking about go back into settings uh, go to display go to the edge screen right over here and go to edge lightning so when you enable edge lightning what's gonna happen is every time you get a text message or an, another notification that you make available uh, it's gonna actually give you a light around the edges of the device it's hard for me to show here because there's so much light in here but uh, you can test it out test it out yourself uh, the only thing I want you guys to be aware of is this thing here uh, it says show edge lightning when the screen is on when the screen is off or always just keep it at always to get the maximum effect and then if you tap this manage notifications only for the applications that you actually enable is for what you will get the edge light lighting all right I've been saying lightning it's actually lighting so if I go here and I can disable this this and just keep this on every time I get a text message I'm also gonna get gonna get the edge lighting all right which is fantastic and if you scroll over it just describes to you what it does and of course if you don't want this boom you turn it off just like the panels the panels can be turned off if you do not need panels but let's keep it up all right guys so that's basically everything you need to know about the edge panels All right, so let's start by getting familiar with the interface. So first and foremost, you know exactly where everything is and what it is there for. 
All right, I'm gonna quickly share one tip that is brand new on this uh, Samsung Galaxy S8. Uh, if you go into the settings, and if you scroll all the way down, there's an option called the floating camera button. If you enable the floating camera button, what's gonna happen is you are actually gonna get a floating camera button. This is actually a shutter button, just like this one. So when you tap this, it actually takes a photo. The same thing with this one. If you tap this, it takes a photo. But this one is flexible, so you can take it and put it anywhere that you please. Absolutely fantastic. Now, let me just disable that for now. And if you want it, you can enable that on your camera. The other thing I want to talk about right now is if you swipe to the left, it brings up your filters menu. Now, here we have standard filters, as you can see over here. So if I tap on any one of these, it gets applied to the photo. And then I can tap this button to remove it. And then what I have is I have the beauty filters. So if you're taking a picture of somebody's face or your own self, you can apply certain beauty filters to make yourself look better in the photo. And then over here, we've got the stamps. So if I tap on these, they actually get dropped onto the screen. Okay, so when you take a photo, it takes a photo with these things. Now what I can do with these is I can move them around. I can resize them and I can even flip them. Okay, so I can grab this and I can rotate these as I please. So I can put this right here. When I take a picture, this will be shown in the picture. If I don't need it, I can simply remove it. Okay, again, one more time, if I go over here, at the bottom, of course, we have the animated filters. This is also brand new in the Samsung Galaxy S8. Now, these filters apply only if you are taking a picture of a person. So basically, if your friend was over here, you can tap on any one of these, and they're gonna create some funny animated filters, and then you can take a picture with it, okay? So just remember, you've got four options over here, not just one like we used to have. Now let's go back out. And of course, remember that all those filters will also apply to the selfie camera, which is on the front, okay? So you don't have to use the rear camera to use these filters. You can also use the selfie camera to use all these filters. The next thing I wanna talk about is if you swipe to the actual right, it brings up the camera modes. And most of us already know what these are, except maybe for the professional mode, which I'm gonna be talking about towards the end of the video. Now that is the auto mode, which is selected, which is what most of us use. Everything gets done for you, so you don't have to tweak anything to make your photo any better. The professional mode, of course, is the mode that allows you to manually adjust just about every setting for your camera. You can adjust your focus manually, you can adjust your white balance manually, you can uh, adjust the shutter speed, the ISO sensitivity, and all those good things. But we are gonna come back to this and look at it in detail. It really is designed for professionals and requires some specialized knowledge to be able to use these manual professional camera modes. Now let's go back over here. I'm gonna show you a couple things you can do here that may come in handy. So first and foremost, you can click this plus sign over here and that's gonna take you, oh, let me click it one more time, into the Samsung store from where you can download even more camera modes. So as you can see, you have the animated GIF, the dual camera, the rear cam selfie, and all these good stuff. Let's just download the sports shot to show you an example. It's gonna say loading, it's gonna download, install, and it's gonna be applied to my camera. If I go back here, now when I go over to my modes, you'll see that the sports mode has been added to my modes. And of course, one more thing you can do is if you tap this icon over here, you can tap on info, and the info gives you some details on what each of the modes do. If you're like me and you're curious about everything, you can go in and you can read all these little uh, tips over here. So for example, the sports mode takes clearer pictures of fast moving subjects, okay? It is designed to do so. Let's go back over here really quick. If you tap this again, the other thing you can do is you can click edit and you can move these modes around. And uh, let me take the slow motion, for example, and put it right over here. Okay, so you can rearrange these modes as you please. If there's something you use frequently, you can put it to the front. If, if there's something you do not use too frequently, you can put it down. And any mode that you download from the store, such as a sports mode, can be deleted. You just tap on that red icon and you remove that mode if you no longer need it. And finally over here, if you tap this button one more time, it says add shortcut to home screen. So what I could do is I can tap on it, pick any one of these modes, 
For example, let's say I want to do panorama and then I click done. And what that does is it sends a shortcut to the home screen. So when I go to the home screen, let's go back. And if I swipe over, you see that the panorama mode has been added to the uh, home screen. Now if I tap this, it launches the camera and takes me straight into the panorama mode without me having to swipe over and selecting it manually, okay? So you can do, with, do that with all these modes, just for your convenience. All right, so we talked about the filters on this side and the modes on this side. Now let's go into the settings and take a look at a couple other things. I'm gonna basically go over everything in the settings, but first I'm gonna highlight my favorites. So let's scroll all the way down. And the first thing I wanna show you guys is the voice control option, which when enabled, allows you to control your camera using your voice. So what I could do is I can say things like smile, cheese, capture, or shoot to take a photo using my voice. Or if I want to record a video, I can say record video and it starts to record the video. I don't have to touch the phone. I can do this from a distance and use my voice as a remote control. So let me enable this and demonstrate really quick. Smile. Now, as you can see, there's a timer that's been set. So the voice controls worked in conjunction with the timer and took a photo. I can also say cheese and it's gonna take a picture that way as well. As you can see, the keyword cheese activates the shutter. So let me go back out here really quick. Let me just disable that for a minute. By the way, I said that you can uh, combine that with the timer function. So make sure if you want to use voice control and timer, that the timer is actually enabled. You can use two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, or none at all. Let me go back out. Now, the other thing that's very, very important, and this applies whether you're taking a photo or shooting a video, is the tracking autofocus. This, when enabled, allows you to do some amazing things, and it is designed for moving objects. It could be your kid, it could be your pet, it could be an, an airplane or a car that you're trying to either take a photo off or record a video off, but you wanna make sure it is always in focus. So let me show you a quick example. So we're gonna be using the camera as an example. So let's say the camera was a moving object. The first thing you wanna do is enable tracking autofocus like I just did, and then tap on the subject that you want to track. Now, anytime this subject moves around, the focus remains fixed on it. So anytime I record a video or take a picture, it's gonna do so by making sure this subject is always in focus. Again, as you can see, I can move this around and it remains tracked and in focus. Absolutely fantastic little tactic. Okay, so let me go back in, disable that really quick. And the other thing I'm gonna show you guys over here is uh, this one. Let's talk about the rear camera, picture size and video size. So obviously this allows you to tweak the quality of your pictures. The larger the number, the higher quality of your picture. I'm talking about the number in parentheses. So that's 12 megapixels, that's 6.2 megapixels, that's 9.1 megapixels. The first number is the aspect ratio, the second number is the resolution. And also it gives you a breakdown of the resolutions over here. The other thing here is the video size. If I tap on the video size, this one over here at the top, the UHD is 4K video. 4K video gets recorded at 30 frames per second, okay? And then over here, you've got the QHD. Not a lot of people use this. And then we have full high definition, which is 1080p, and also full high definition, which is also 1080p. But this one on the top is recorded at 60 frames per second. What's the difference between this and this? When you record at 60 frames per second, it's gonna give you a smoother video. All you have to do is record a video using full high definition and then switch to this option and record the video again and then compare the two videos and you'll see the big difference. Uh, with, the, um, with the 60 frames per second, you get buttery smooth video. But that's basically the most important things in these settings. So you got the 4K, the full high definition at 60 frames per second and full high definition at 30 frames per second. By the way, the 4K also gets recorded at 30 frames per second. Okay, so let's go back in here 
and then again I want to scroll all the way down I'm going to show you one thing over here the shutter sound if you enable this what happens is every time you take a photo with your uh, with your camera with your phone camera it actually creates a shutter sound so if you want to take pictures without being noticed you want to make sure you disable this so nobody can hear that you're actually taking pictures the other thing here is the volume key function so we have the volume uh, slider over here you can use it for different purposes you can use it to take a picture record a video or zoom in and zoom out of photos so let's demonstrate let's take pictures let's go back out what you can do is you can simply tap on the vol volume uh, button and that's going to activate the shutter button of course the timer is enabled so it's going to it's going to use the timer as well let me go back uh, disable the timer just so we save time and uh, if you go back again volume key function if you modify this to zoom this time you can actually use the volume buttons to zoom in and zoom out of the image which is very very handy alrighty so you can you can modify these things the other thing I want to talk about is the quick launch obviously uh, make sure this is enabled because it's a very useful function basically what it does is if your uh, phone is turned off and let's say you have a lock on it maybe you have uh, fingerprints enabled maybe you have a pin number enabled what you want to do oops that was a mistake maybe what you want to do is you want to launch the camera really quick all you do is double tap this and it's going to launch the camera then you can take use the volume keys or the shutter button here you can take a quick picture and then you can move on all right so let me go back up here and show you this other thing so this is called the location tags basically what happens is if this is enabled it could be a security concern every time you take a photo it actually embeds the location where that photo was taken and it embeds the exact location for example let me go back out here it's already enabled let me take a photo right now and let me go into that photo and what I could do or anybody could do is they can go into the information of that photo and that actually gives you or gives somebody else your exact location on a map okay so again you take a picture you send it to some stranger and that stranger now knows exactly where you are so just be careful with these uh, with these things all right and of course the other thing you want to always make sure is enabled is video stabilization when you're recording the video this is going to make sure that your video looks nice and stable and it doesn't look shaky uh, like some videos do trust me the difference is day and night again take a video with this disabled and then take a video with this enabled and compare the two and you will see the big difference all right so let's go back up here and looks like we have covered most of the important things uh, one thing I want to talk about is ways to take pictures over here if I go inside what happens is you can actually enable or disable any of these options first one is the one I want to talk about you can tap the screen to take a selfie so if you're using the selfie camera you can simply tap on the screen and that's gonna take a photo and of course on the back of your phone right under the LED flash is the heart rate sensor if you enable this you can use that to also take photos if you tap the heart rate sensor it's gonna take a selfie photo all right so let's go back out looks like we've talked about just about everything and um, let me go back here let's see and looks like that's it all right and uh, now what I want to do is I want to talk about the manual camera mode which is also called the professional mode that is right over there all right so let's go into the professional mode and then as you can see what we have here is we have these things on the side and these are basically the controls for the ISO for the shutter speed for the focus and for the white balance and this over here these are the metering modes so you have metering matrix metering spot and uh, metering center weighted which is the best option to have now unfortunately I cannot go into the details about these things because I would have to give you a lecture on photography what I want to tell you what I want to show you guys is for example as you can see that's the ISO value so if I tap this and if I increase or decrease the value as you can see the brightness of the picture uh, becomes you know either becomes bright or becomes dark which in technical terms means when it's dark it means it's underexposed when it is 
Not dark is too bright, it means it's overexposed. So the key here is to use these functions so that you have a perfectly exposed photo. Now when you go to the auto mode, the exposure happens automatically so you get the perfect uh, brightness so the picture doesn't look too blown out or too dark. With the manual mode, when you go to the manual mode, the professional mode, you have to tweak the settings yourself. So ISO is one of those settings that allow you to do that. Then you have the shutter speed, okay, how quickly the shutter opens and closes. So as you can see, the bigger the value, you know, the shutter, shutter is going to be open very quickly and close very quickly. So it's going to be, it's not going to be able to suck in too much light. So it's going to be dark. It's going to be underexposed. But you can change that value again, all right? Now it's, bec it's becoming too bright. So you have to manually adjust these settings to get the perfect shot. Uh, this one here is manual focus. So what you could do is you can manually focus in and out of objects. You see that? See how that lens becomes blurry? It's out of focus and then I can actually focus into it manually by using that dial. All right? You can do the same thing with the white balance. You can pick any white balance you want. You can pick the, that's the temperature for the colors. So 2800K, and then you can do fluorescent bulb coloring, which is 4000K and all that good stuff. Now when you're taking manual photos, one thing you might want to look into is go into the settings, and then go into picture size, and at the bottom make sure save raw and JPEG files is enabled, okay? So what this is going to do, not only is it going to save in JPEG format, it's also going to save in the raw format. The raw format file can then be imported into your computer and then you can download a photo editing tool and go and tweak that raw photo in really good detail. Again, if you're not a professional, you may be thinking, what the hell is he talking about? But uh, I'm just trying to give you an overview, some keywords so you can go search them. But again, all you have to remember about this professional mode is you tweak the settings, the ISO, the shutter speed, uh, the manual focus, and the white balance over here uh, to create a well-exposed shot. If you actually want to master this uh, professional mode, which could be very, very useful, trust me, you can actually go and study these things. You can study the ISO, the shutter setting, and even aperture setting. Uh, you actually have to take a little course in photography. All right, so that is the professional mode. I'm sorry I cannot give you a complete tutorial on actual photography, but hopefully I gave you some pointers. So let's go back into the auto mode. And of course, the basic things over here that we skipped, this is the flash, you can enable it. Always turn it on, turn it off, or make it automatic. And you have the HDR, and as you know, HDR can be turned on or turned off. I prefer to keep it in automatic. HDR basically takes multiple photos and then stitches those photos together and gives you the perfect picture. So it's, it, it's good to have it enabled and set to auto because the camera knows when HDR is necessary and when it's not necessary. And that's the end of the video. And I hope you guys have learned a lot of new stuff for your Galaxy S8. All right, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech and give this video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends and save it for later viewing in your playlist. And finally, follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Saki Tech Online. Guys, have a fantastic day.